Hey everyone, in today's video, I will be covering how to integrate WSL2 with GitHub. So this is continuation to our previous video where we discuss how to build a development environment by installing WSL2 on Windows machine and integrate it with VS Code. So we will continue from there to work way up. So there are two ways we can interact with Git providers like GitHub or GitLab, either go with HTTP or SSH. Well, HTTP based authentication is relatively straightforward. So in this video, we'll focus on setting up SSH based authentication with GitHub from WSL. So we'll walk you through each step, starting with Git installation, configuring your GitHub account in the Git configuration file. Next, we'll generate SSH key pair and upload the public key to the GitHub account. Finally, we'll test SSH authentication from the shell of your local machine and demonstrate how to clone the repository using SSH. So before we proceed, if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content. Well, to start off, we need to have the Git installed in our local machines. In this case, I will be connecting from Ubuntu we have set up in VS Code in our previous video. And most of the latest distribution do come with the Git installed, but in case it is not, you can install with apt install git command. So let's run the git version to get the installation status and the version details. And once we have the git installed, we need to define few parameters for the git config. So one thing I want to point out here is that the purpose of git config is to customize how git works on your computer. And this configuration can be specified to a particular repository as a local configuration or applied globally to all repositories on your machines. So in this video, I'll show you how to set the parameters globally. To do this, we'll set our username and the email address with a git config hyphen hyphen global command. Email would be the email address you have used for your GitHub. We can also specify the default branch name as main. And this means that any new Git repository we create on our system will have the branch name as main as a default initial branch instead of master. And after completing this configuration, we can verify the accuracy of the details by checking the configuration file. Next, we'll see how to generate a such key pair. And most remote hosting services like GitHub or GitLab supports SSH and HTTP based authentications. However, SSH offers better security and convenience as it does not require you to provide the credential every time you interact with the repository. So SSH is a more preferred method, especially during the frequent interaction with GitHub repositories. So for this, we need to have the SSH key generated. So here we are going to generate RSA key with the 4096 key length and hyphen C is to put a command, which is an optional. So once the key is generated, we'll have the private and the public key stored at the SSH folder given here. And the private key stays inside your local machines and the public key will be saved at the hosting provider. In this case, GitHub. So let's open the public key with the default path and copy it. Next, we'll go to the GitHub page and log in with your credentials. So under the profile, you'll see a settings and select SSH and GPU keys and click new SSH key. Mention the title and update the public key you have copied from the local machines. So we have finished the configurations and updated the SSH key at the GitHub. Now we can go ahead and test this from our terminal. We can do a simple SSH connection to the git at github.com with hyphen T flag which stands for testings. So in the backend, it tried to make an SSH connection to the GitHub and if it goes well, you will see a successful authentication in the output. Since GitHub doesn't provide the shell, we don't be switched to the GitHub shell from the local machine. Finally, we'll go to the GitHub page and create a test repository. So I'm create a private repository and add readme file. So once it is created, click on the code on the right hand side. Under this, you will find three options. The first one would be HTTP, where you will be cloning your repository with HTTP protocol. You just need to provide your credentials on your local machine every time you clone it. Since we have the SSH session established, we'll go with SSH. So copy the link and switch back to the VS Code terminal. So here we can use the git clone command followed by the repository path we have copied from the GitHub. 
So now we can see it is trying to clone the remote repository to the local machines. And we can see a folder has been created here with a readme file in it. So this is how you can build an SSH session with a GitHub and clone the repository. And these steps are pretty much same for any other hosting provider. I hope this is informative and we'll see you next time.